Well, we have officially gone beyond the realm of judicial activism. We have entered the realm of judicial heroism. Viva Fry, Montreal litigator turned YouTuber, and this is Winnie the Westie, and I have exactly one hour before getting on a podcast with the one and only Gad Sad, and my goodness, what a fitting time to cover such a story. You will not believe this story when we get into it. There has been a lot of discussion recently about this concept known as mass formation psychosis, how societies as a whole can go bark raving mad, if that's the proper expression, how they can be led to believe absurdities and therefore led to commit atrocities, but according to the fact checkers, mass formation psychosis doesn't exist. From Reuters, fact check, no evidence of pandemic, quote, mass formation psychosis, end quote, say experts speaking to Reuters. Quote, mass formation psychosis, end quote, is not an academic term recognized in the field of psychology, nor is there evidence of any such phenomenon occurring during the COVID-19 pandemic, multiple experts in crowd psychology have told Reuters. So multiple experts in crowd psychology have told Reuters that mass formation psychosis doesn't exist? What exactly do you think crowd psychology is in the first place? Basically, European intellectual inquiry into what the heck happened in Germany in the 20s and 30s. You know, very intelligent, highly educated population, and they went barking mad. All right, but setting that aside and setting aside the fact that pretty much every fact check these days is really nothing more than an opinion piece playing on semantics in order to achieve the desired result, if you had any doubt as to the existence of any mass formation psychosis or crowd psychology phenomenon, just read a few headlines that have been going viral these days. From the BBC, Canada, unvaccinated father loses right to see his child. A Canadian father who has not been vaccinated against COVID has temporarily lost the right to see his 12-year-old child. A judge ruled his visits would not be in the child's, quote, best interest, end quote. I previously did a vlog breaking down this story. I'll include a link to that video in the pinned comment. But just to add a cherry to this absurd Sunday, the kid had been double-vaxxed, the mother was double-vaxxed, the father did not want to get vaccinated, and the judge said, no, it is still in the best interest of the child not to see his or her father until the father gets vaccinated, despite the fact that the kid is double-vaccinated. But before you go ahead and mock Quebec and Canada as being outlier examples of this mass formation psychosis, that does not exist, there are a couple of cases coming out of the states to the same effect. New York judge suspends father's visitation rights with daughter unless he gets COVID vaccine or subjects to weekly testing. October 15, 2021. And out of Chicago, in reversal, judge allows Chicago mother to see her son even if she doesn't have COVID-19 vaccine. Last updated, August 30, 2021. The only silver lining in that Chicago case is that the judge had originally barred the mother from seeing her son unless she were to get vaccinated, but there was such a public outcry, such a backlash, that the judge literally revised his own order to remove that conclusion from his order. And these types of absurdities are occurring not only from the judicial bench, they're occurring everywhere, including mainstream media. Just yesterday, I did a vlog of another incident coming out of Quebec of a talk show host literally parading around two children on stage, asking them if they were vaccinated and what they think should happen to people who are not vaccinated. Ah oui, hein? Wow. On dirait que je les ai drillés, Julie. Oui. 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 <rire> Puis qu'est-ce qu'on devrait faire avec les gens qui veulent pas se faire vacciner? On devrait euh, appeler la police. Ouh, oui. 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 S'ils n'ont pas leur vaccin, ça peut mettre beaucoup de personnes en danger. Fait comme le gouvernement est en train de faire en ce moment, il faut leur couper petite chose à petite jusqu'à temps qu'ils qu se tannent et qu'ils se fassent vacciner. En tout cas, vous avez, on a des futurs politiciens à côté de nous. <rire> Merci! All right, just a point of clarification. In the vlog I did on this yesterday, I identified the woman who was nodding her head as the children's mother. The woman is not their mother. She's actually their teacher, which makes this even worse, actually. All right, back to the vlog. If you haven't seen that vlog, check it out as well. The link will be in the pinned comment. And the only silver lining out of that situation, I guess, is that the talk show host, Julie Snyder, is taking a little bit of flack because some people are saying that was a little bit too much to be using children as propaganda. And my goodness, what they were spouting in terms of government propaganda could be deemed to be offensive to a few people. But if you thought that was absurd, wait until you see the story for today. Again, coming from the bench. And my goodness, when you read this judgment, you are going to ask yourself, what is going on in the world? in which we live. Which, in which we live. You're saying it weird. Why are you putting so much emphasis on the H? Also from Reuters, January 19, 2022, U.S. judge calls unvaccinated adults, quote, unpatriotic, end quote, as Omicron prompts trial delay. And just a little clarification I like to make so that people can appreciate the difference between fact and spin. It is not Omicron that is causing the trial delay. It is the judge's decision. Reuters, a federal judge in Florida in a scathing order delayed an upcoming trial due to the surge in COVID-19 cases as he blasts
blasted adults who have yet to get vaccinated as, quote, uninformed and irrational or less charitably selfish and unpatriotic, end quote. U.S. District Judge Robert Scola, an appointee of former Democratic President Barack Obama, in Tuesday's order said that given the rapid spread of the Omicron variant, he had proposed requiring all jurors in the February 7 trial to be vaccinated. But Scola said lawyers for Progressive Select Insurance Company, which is defending against claims for coverage by a motorist who was in a car crash in 2019, objected, saying they did not want to exclude unvaccinated jurors. Now, not that I don't trust Reuters, the reputable news agency who in a fact check just claimed that mass formation psychosis does not exist by a group of crowd psychologists. Not that I don't trust Reuters, but I don't. I had to go read this decision myself because I said there's no way the judge actually said in this decision what Reuters is saying the judge said in this decision. I went and found this decision. I read it and my goodness, it's even worse than what Reuters is saying. U.S. State's District Court for the Southern District of Florida, Kevin Colazzo, plaintiff versus Progressive Select Insurance Company defendant. Order canceling specially set trial. This automobile accident case is currently specially set for trial beginning on February 7, 2022. On January 18, 2022, during a hearing on pretrial motions, the court explained its current COVID-19 trial procedures. The court advised counsel that all parties seeking to participate in the forthcoming trial, including counsel and the parties, must be fully vaccinated or provide a negative COVID-19 PCR test within 24 hours before the first day of trial. Now, why would it make sense in order to require a negative PCR test from the unvaccinated and not from the vaccinated, considering we now unequivocally know that the vaccinated can nonetheless carry and transmit the virus? Why would that be? Who knows? But if you thought that was illogical, wait until you see the next part. Additionally, in light of the recent Omicron surge of COVID-19 cases in Miami-Dade County, the court advised counsel that all members of the prospective jury panel must be vaccinated. Counsel for the plaintiff did not object to the court's procedures. Defense counsel, claiming they did not want to exclude unvaccinated jurors from the trial, objected to the court's use of only fully vaccinated prospective jurors. Given the demographic and political statistics as relates to vaccination, it's totally understandable that the plaintiff would not object to these procedures because the plaintiff could certainly guarantee a certain political orientation of prospective juror members by insisting that all of them be vaccinated. The defendant operating on the same statistics and playing the same game says, no, I don't want to have a prospective jury that is only vaccinated because that certainly eliminates a certain type of juror member that I might want to have on the jury. So counsel for the defense rightly and above all else strategically says, no, we do not agree to have only vaccinated members of the jury. And the judge in the end says, look, I can't force this for appellate reasons, even though I think I could. So I'm just going to postpone the trial. But wait until you see what the judge has to say as to why he is proceeding this way. All of us who participate in the justice system have a shared obligation to protect those who enter the courthouse. This grave obligation is particularly pronounced as to jurors and witnesses who are present only under legal compulsion. Just as the court and the legal profession have an obligation to protect those who enter the courthouse, all of us have an obligation to consider the safety and well-being of our community. The vast majority of adults in Miami-Dade County have met this obligation. Over 94% of Miami-Dade County adult residents have been vaccinated. All right, this seems a little preachy, and I am asking myself how far the judge would push this. Would he bar someone from the courthouse if they had a cold? Would he bar someone from the courthouse if they had an STD or something along those lines? I don't know, but wait until you read this next paragraph. It is the court's belief that the vast majority of the unvaccinated adults are uninformed and irrational or less charitably selfish and unpatriotic. The court believes that these individuals have given a distorted meaning to the COVID-19 vaccine rather than recognize the vaccine for what it is, an effective and safe means of minimizing transmission and illness. Brought to you by Pfizer. Based on what does the judge say this? Now, I'm not asking the question to contradict or deny or undermine what the judge is saying or even to argue with it. But the problem is that when something finds its way into a judgment, typically it's because evidence has been adduced to that effect before the judge. And here it would seem that the judge is taking judicial notice not only of things that might be hotly disputed, but also judicial notice of what he thinks of the unvaccinated. And if you can believe it, it actually gets a little worse, not much worse, because I don't know how much worse it can possibly get than what we just read. Whether uninformed and irrational or selfish and unpatriotic, no citizen is excused from considering their obligation to the health and well-being of their community. Else, the health, welfare, and safety of society would be subordinated to a substantial minority. Over 100 years ago, the Supreme Court upheld a state's compulsory vaccination program and noted that nothing in our democracy grants, unquote, absolute right in each person to be wholly freed from restraint, end quote. Jacobson versus Commonwealth of Massachusetts. 1905, the court held that individuals may be called upon and even compelled to protect a community, whether by means of vaccination or by conscription. Now, I wholly recognize that I am merely a Quebec attorney making videos from the front of my Subaru, but even I know that that is not what Jacobson set by way of precedent. Jacobson did not set the precedent that people could be vaccinated against their wills, but only that they could, in theory, be fined. And it was a small fine, even by the monies of the time, in the event that they refused to get vaccinated. And from 
what I understand of the Jacobson decision, which was rendered in 1905, civil rights has come something of a long way in American law. But setting all that aside, it is quite clear the conclusion to which the judge wanted to come based on his preconceived notion and opinion of the unvaccinated. And although the judge is not going to force the trial with only vaccinated jurors, he's going to postpone it, but only for appellate reasons, because he thinks he's within his rights to insist that all jury members be vaccinated in law. In a way, the jury is a microcosm of organized society. It, quote, lies at the very heart of the jury system, end quote, that, quote, those eligible for jury service are to be found in every stratum of society, end quote. Old and young, disabled and immunocompromised are all called to jury service. The court will not abdicate its duty. <laughs> duty and obligation to ensure the protection of these witnesses and jurors by exposing them to risks, particularly when those risks are heightened by the Omicron variant. Again, not to agree or disagree with this conclusion, just to ask the question, how and on what evidence did the judge come to this conclusion? And it's in the next line where the judge says he thinks he would have been legally justified to insist that all jury members be vaccinated, but he doesn't want to create an appellate issue. While the court does not believe that excluding unvaccinated jurors in the middle of a pandemic is legally impermissible, it nonetheless does not want to create an appellate issue. The specially set jury trial beginning on February 7, 2022 is cancelled. So that is the latest iteration of a phenomenon that apparently, according to Reuters, does not exist. And it's not just the words that the judge uses. It's not just the intolerant ideology that the judge uses. It's the fact that the judge is basically taking as judicial knowledge evidence that was not adduced before the judge himself. These judges are rendering decisions based on evidence that has not been adduced, and that is not how the court system works. It's not a question of judicial activism anymore. It's a question of perceived judicial heroism. Anyhow, no harm, no foul. The trial will get postponed, although some do say that justice delayed is justice denied, not just for the plaintiff, but also for the defendant. But either way, with that said, if you like my videos, you like my content, please be sure to like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and drop a comment in the comment section below because it feeds the algorithm. Mm, wow, this is good. What's in there? If you want to support the channel, all of these support links are in the pinned comment. We have got merch, politics, ruins, everything, among other things. Robert Barnes and I do weekly streams every Sunday. We do weekly streams with a guest every Wednesday called The Sidebar. If you want to find us and support us on Locals, where supporters get tons of exclusive content, you can find us at beaverbarnslaw.locals.com. My content is also on Rumble, which has recently merged with Locals, as a result of which there's a nifty little widget on the Rumble page that will bring you right to our community if you are so inclined. But more important than anything, take care of yourselves, check in on friends and family, make sure everyone around you is doing well, and now you know your vlog. Peace out. Yeah.